But then I was asking myself, neither am I a woman nor am I a in medicine. So what am I doing here? So I asked him, I said, well, what, what am I doing here? What, what am I supposed to speak? He simply said, you know, give us an outsider's perspective on what needs to be done, what possibly, you know, we can't see. And when you're inside uh, the profession, if you're a doctor or even if you're a woman, you probably end up, you know, with a tunnel vision. So probably giving an outsider's perspective and trying to give you a sense of what I think is happening across the world is what I would love to do today. Medicine has always been looked up to as one of the noblest professions across the world. In fact, even today when I speak to my daughter, who is 13, and when, when, when I ask her, you know, what, what is it that you want to do? I think many, many fathers, many, many parents, in fact, in India especially, have had this, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, I've had this thing, you know, where you want your son to be an engineer and your daughter to be a doctor. I think that is how it has been. But my mother, I have to tell you, a, a little story, an anecdotal one. My mother always wanted me to be a doctor. She was insisting, she was actually, uh, uh, she was actually very passionate about it. She's always said, you know, there, is, there isn't a single doctor in the family, you should actually become a doctor. I ended up taking biology, I eventually ended up as a biotechnologist, that's a different story. Uh, back in 91, when I was in my plus two, um, I studied reasonably well. I don't think I'm a top of the class uh, student, but I was a above average student, let me put it that way. And back in, the, back in that day, um, we had MSET. No, uh, now I think it's NEET. Back in that day, it was MSET. So I, in my, in my uh, in, right after I finished my plus two, I only could uh, gather, I, I only could gather a 1600 rank. I wasn't one of those top students who could get into the top 100 or 200. So I ended up uh, getting only B pharmacy and I could have possibly gotten agriculture or something. I didn't want to do that. Then I actually went to Karnataka, took that entrance test. Now what happened is, of course, in Karnataka, there were many more medical colleges. The private medical college system is far more robust. So I got in there. In fact, I got in some of the best colleges in Karnataka. But my father is a very persuasive man. He can convince you, uh, you know, to basically do anything he wants. Right? So when I came and told him that I got through this entrance test in Karnataka and I'm going to join medicine in Karnataka, he told me, do you know how many years the doctors you know, kind of takes to settle into life. I said, I have no clue. My mom wanted me to be a doctor, so I'm going to be a doctor. He said, you know, you'll be 32 or 33 by the time you complete your graduation, post-graduation, super specialization and a bunch of other things. And then for the rest of your life, you could be called at 12 in the midnight, you know, for an emergency and you'll have to run. So there won't be much of a work-life balance. He kind of basically stressed me out by saying all that. I said, okay, if that is the case, I'm not doing it. I'd rather do something else. So that's how I ended up not being a doctor, is where I'm going with this. But I do believe sincerely, because each and every time some family member of mine had an emergency, the kind of admiration, the kind of respect in that movement, in that moment, any person would have toward the doctor that treats you is something that is unquantifiable, immeasurable, and that kind of gratitude, that kind of amazement with which we look at you all the people engaged in this noble profession is in, I mean, that, that cannot be summed up in words. So my compliments to you because, you know, these are all intangibles. Now, I am the Minister of uh, Municipal Administration. I keep telling my team, you know, that if Hyderabad ko log har din saaf rakhte hain, har din agar saaf sudra rakhte hain, koi hume compliment nahi deta hai, koi bhi hume tarif nahi karta hai, but char din chhod do, itna gali milta hai, same applies to you guys also. You treat a patient very well, you'll just be, you know, given a thanks. You'll just be told, you've done a great job, thank you very much. But, that one out of the thousand mess-ups will get you such flat that you will never ever forget for the rest of your life. That is the, noble, that is the profession that you've chosen, unfortunately, or fortunately. So therefore, it is a thankless job, but I think this is one opportunity that I would like to take to thank this entire brilliant team of medical professionals assembled here. Thank you very much on behalf of the people of Telangana, of all of us non-medical professionals. In the past few years, of course, India has made tremendous advancements in the field of medicine. Many of our, our doctors, like Dr. Reddy here, have made their mark on the international arena. I know Dr. Reddy also travels quite a bit. Uh, he travels, I think, to at least a few countries every month. A noble profession like medicine, of course, can play a pivotal role in 
breaking the boundaries of gender bias as well. Although historically it has been a male dominated field, many extraordinary women also have played various pioneers in healthcare. One such path breaking personality was Dr. Anandi Bal Joshi, who was the first female Indian physician and the first Indian woman to have gained a degree in Western medicine in the late 1800s. Another example, of course, is Dr. V. Shanta, an oncologist who was awarded Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan awards for her efforts in improving accessibility of affordable cancer treatment. And of course, we have our own Dr. Samya Swaminathan, who was only present during COVID. The pediatrician, she, the pediatrician who was at the helm of World Health Organization as a chief scientist during COVID-19 pandemic. Talking about the pandemic, I must also use this opportunity to mention that two of the three companies that have developed indigenous COVID-19 vaccines in India are from the city of Hyderabad and both of them have women as their leaders in the driver's seat. Suchitra Ella of Bharat Biotech and of course Mahina Bapla of Biologic Levans, both are outstanding women leaders in healthcare and medicine who have contributed tremendously to the vaccine industry and to the biotechnology industry in India and abroad. The list of women who have made strides in the field of healthcare goes on. There's plenty of very, very talented doc doctors and medical professionals across the globe and across India now also. Today, our healthcare systems are rapidly transforming as they embrace digital technologies. Women can play an important role in this evolution, not only as medical professionals, but also in the field of AI, big data, and data digitization, which aid in smarter decision making. As a state with leadership position in technology and also life sciences, broadly, of course, healthcare, we are thrilled about the opportunities presented by the new areas of medicine and biomedical technologies. I keep, I keep saying this very often. I keep saying that Hyderabad is neither north of India nor south of India. In fact, Hyderabad is where the north of India meets the south of India. Hyderabad is where Paratha meets Dosa. Hyderabad is where biology meets technology. Hyderabad is where data sciences marries life sciences. Hyderabad is where mangoverse meets metaverse. Hyderabad is that beautiful melting pot where the confluence of these technologies can be leveraged to the greater good of humanity, greater good of you know healthcare advancements in today's world. 